Hey everyone, I am Rachel Tufel, and we are here today to make an amazing, fun, super cute, adorable holiday treat. We are gonna be making mug huggers, which are basically three-dimensional cookies that when you build them and sandwich all these cookies together, decorate it, it looks like a mini gingerbread house that is perfect for sitting right on top of your cup of tea or coffee or even hot chocolate as our winter months start coming in. That's certainly my favorite beverage of choice this time of year. So I just want to give you a couple of reminders for uh, today's live event. First of all, if you haven't done so already, please be sure to download your materials. Um, in your materials, you're going to find uh, beautiful um, pictures just for inspiration that will help guide you as you start decorating your mug huggers. But in addition, I have a list of all your tools and supplies as well as a recipe for one of my favorite cutout cookies. Now these cutout cookies are actually a little bit puffier than a traditional cookie. So we'll talk about that in a moment. So make sure you download this so you can follow along as I talk you through the recipe as well. Now please remember we are live, so if you have any questions at all, feel free to drop a question into our chat and I will absolutely be checking in and answering any of those questions as they come through. Um, it could be questions about our cookies, our recipes, sprinkles, the products I'm using. Feel free to let us know uh, what you need answered today. So let's get started with our mug huggers. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is just our recipe in general. Now this is a recipe that I have used for many years. I grew up baking with my Hungarian grandmother and my mother and this is one of the recipes that we utilized um, as a young child and it is definitely a puffier sugar cookie than a lot of the current recipes that are out there that tend to stay flat and really hold their shape but there's a couple tricks in order to use this recipe for what we're doing today now I personally love a really soft cookie that you can just kind of melt um, right into and um, it's a delicious uh, vanilla flavor you can always add a little bit of almond extract if you'd like a slightly different flavor as well um, and it's a lovely texture these cookies don't snap they actually um, they just kind of fold in half and they break open and they're nice and soft on the inside so if, if you are looking for a sugar cookie that has a really soft inside, this is definitely the recipe for you. Now, the key in utilizing this recipe to be able to create something that's going to hold its structure, like our little houses, um, it's really important that you do bake these a tiny bit longer than uh, what you would normally do for a sugar cookie. So, um, and it and I will warn you a little bit, it does depend a touch on how big your cutters are. So if you're using a really big sugar cookie cutter um, and that cookie is gonna be you know, three inches by three inches, then you're gonna have to extend the baking time a little bit. But for something as small as these little squares and rectangles, um, these are gonna bake off pretty quickly. They typically in my oven at 375 um, is gonna take about out six minutes so it doesn't take long for these little ones to cook up um, but once you uh, if you use this recipe for something else just keep in mind you might have to play with your temperature a little bit um, I always recommend mixing up your sugar dough and refrigerating it. You absolutely must do that with this recipe. Um, I would recommend that for any sugar cooker recipe in order to hold its shape. But specifically for this one, it must be refrigerated. So you're going to refrigerate your mix everything up. This, this is a basic recipe. You're just going to, I would say, not everything's just going to get thrown in, but just about everything just gets get thrown in. You mix it all up. You've got a beautiful batter. You want that texture to be basically like Play-Doh. Um, you don't want it too sticky. So feel free to add more flour as you need to. If your butter is too soft or if um, you just overbeat it, for instance, oftentimes the dough will just become super sticky. So don't be afraid to add a little dough. But I would actually recommend 
adding that dough in a slightly different fashion. So if you look at the recipe, it's asking you uh, to cream uh, butter and sugar together and uh, add in your eggs and then all of your dry ingredients. And there's actually a sour cream and uh, baking soda mixture um, that gets um, mixed together first and then put in. That's what keeps these nice and fluffy. Um, but what you want is just a Play-Doh that's not going to stick to your fingers. And that's what we're going for. If you are ooey gooey and it is sticking to your fingers right out of the bowl, go ahead and add a half a cup of flour to it and then you will be able to um, get it out of the bowl a little bit better. Um, but if you are basically holding your shape and you just have a little tackiness to your fingers, just knead in that last half cup of flour because um, it will allow you to uh, touch this dough really easily. It will roll out nicely. It won't stick to your pin, um, all that good stuff. So uh, that's the key when making this particular dough is just making sure that you have a nice soft texture. The other reason uh, that I want to refrigerate this dough, so one is you want it cold so it holds its shape. But the other reason I like to give it a little bit of time to set is it gives that flour an opportunity to absorb all the moisture that we just put in there with the sour cream, our eggs, it allows the dough to soften. So it's actually a much more tender cookie, in my opinion, when you allow that dough to rest a little bit put it in the refrigerator, let it rest overnight if you can, then roll it out and cut all your cookies. Um, it, it, to me, it just makes a better cookie in general. But if you have a sugar cookie recipe that works for you, by all means, use that. And then once you're ready to roll these out, this dough is super soft. It actually just rolls really nicely. Um, you're going to roll it out and use your cookie cutter. Now, I have a template here for you. So if you don't want to purchase a cookie cutter specifically for uh, this project, just cut out each of these objects. You're going to sandwich them between uh, two pieces of clear tape. Um, here we go. Here, I'll just show you real quick because this is a really good tip. This is a great tip for any recipe um, that, or any style of cookie that you're looking to make. So you simply use some packaging tape. You're just going to set it down onto your template. And I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing. Just like that. And then you can either use an X-Acto knife or just scissors. Let me just grab, I've got my little guys in here. Well, I have an X-Acto knife, that's gonna work. Um, let me just grab that, sorry guys. Oh. So you can use a pair of scissors here, or you can just use your X-Acto knife. And you just want to trim right around each of these pieces. And I have a tendency just to do all my straight lines first, all the way across, and then come back in and do my horizontal. Now, the beauty of this particular design is truly, um, you could get away with finding a little cookie cutter in your, your square or rectangular shapes pretty easily. I think um, anybody who is doing any sort of baking and specifically doing any kind of cookie decorating, um, you probably have a multitude of cutters on hand that you can utilize. But uh, if you don't and you don't want to invest in any, don't worry. All you do is trim around your edges and then you'll lay this out on your dough and just with a very sharp paring knife or your X-Acto knife, you can cut right around your dough. So, uh, you know, these are not super Super expensive they're less than ten dollars depending upon where you get them um, but I would highly recommend it just makes this process faster especially because we have six cookies per house so that's a lot of um, that's a lot of cookies uh, to hand cut if you're gonna do that um, so I do recommend just going ahead and utilizing a cutter if you have the opportunity to do that but this is a backup and an easy way to do it if you need to um, and that tape is there for a 
couple reasons. It gives you a little bit of structure, and then it also gives you a clean surface that you can utilize, and it's not going to absorb the oils uh, from our cookie dough in general. So, um, okay, so once you have your cookies all cut out, bake them off. Uh, I personally like, a, or like I said, a really soft cookie. So I'm gonna pull in my cookies and show you uh, what we have here. There are two styles of bake here. So I have this one, which is not baked for quite as long, and it is a little lighter in color. And then I have another one that is slightly golden. Golden. Now this is the underside of my cookies. So this is the part that sits on the cookie sheet. The tops actually look very similar. Um, and the bottoms, they actually have a little bit of dimpling that's happening. And that is just a matter of what surface you end up baking on. So uh, a sheet like this that has some texture to it will actually bake a really beautiful cookie. It will have a little bit of texture, but it'll be very even throughout. If you're just baking on a silicone mat that's very smooth, um, you may end up getting some of the bubbling like what I had, or even just on a flat cookie sheet and something that doesn't have texture. Um, this particular pan is really great because it provides that extra texture under your cookie, allows the air to kind of escape evenly, and then you don't have that um, kind of bubbly look, I guess. Uh, but it's up to you. However you like to bake off your cookies is totally fine. And then um, I prefer a softer cookie when I'm eating it. Um, so you can, as long as it's holding its structure, you can absolutely uh, bake it just for six minutes. This one's gone just a little bit longer. This is about eight minutes. And that's, um, that's kind of the difference that you'll see between them. It's entirely up to you, whatever your preference is. If you like a snappier cookie, something that crunches in your mouth rather than something that's soft and sort of melts in your mouth, um, those are the two differences that you're gonna get. And that is simply based on how long you have baked it. So you can adjust your timing according to what you'd like. Now, both of these will make beautiful little mug huggers. So no stress over um, what they will look like. They will hold their structure and both of them will be just fine. One is just a little crunchier, one is a little softer. So, okay. Doesn't look like we have any questions yet, but if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in. Um, if you have a favorite uh, sugar cookie that you really enjoy um, and you wanna share what that is, feel free to let us know. Um, and do know you can always do this with a gingerbread recipe as well. Fabulous. Oh, um, Margaret, you're asking if we can use butter rather than margarine. For this recipe, I would not recommend it. And the main reason is just that butter and margarine are two very different items. Uh, yes, they're both fat, but they have different water consistencies. So if you wanna follow the recipe exactly at it, as it is, you could not just do an even substitute with margarine and butter. There's a little bit more water in margarine, it's softer. So if you do wanna make that substitution, just know that you may have a thicker dough and you may need to either decrease your flour just a little bit or um, increase your moisture. And sometimes that's a matter of um, just a little extra sour cream, there, there's a couple ways you can do that, but you do have to balance the recipe. Uh, so I can't tell you that it is a 100% substitution for butter to margarine, because it's not. Um, but if you want to play with the recipe, minor little adjustments in flour or moisture content um, is good. And then um, Anita is asking about coconut or almond flour instead of regular flour. Again, I've not tried those particular flowers in this recipe, so it's not that they couldn't be substituted, I just don't know what other adjustments you might need to make. Those types of flowers are typically not an even um, exchange, and so uh, you have to look at what product you're trying to substitute into a cookie recipe, and then make other adjustments in your the rest of the ingredients as well. Um, depending upon what flour you choose to use, some of them can 
can be an even substitution, but not all of them. And so again, for today's purposes, um, that recipe uh, is what it is. I, I can't make all those little adjustments um, depending upon which ingredients you want to sub in or out. Um, and Corinne is asking about uh, the little cutter. I actually just got it on Amazon, but there are a handful of sugar cookie cutter companies that also sell Mug Hugger. So um, if you just click in uh, Mug Hugger cookies and uh, put cutter next to it, you'll be good to go. But this one's just from Amazon. So um, hopefully uh, that helps at least get you on your way there. Um, so that's sort of the baking process. And um, I want to get started with the decorating process because one, that is my favorite part of the process. And two, it actually takes a little time. So I want to make sure we get through a couple of these cookies and um, have some finished products for you. Let's talk real quickly just about sprinkles. Now, um, sprinkles are one of those things that they come in every color, every shape, other, all sorts of sizes, textures. You really have so many options out there these days um, with our uh, sprinkle options. So I always encourage you to have a variety, whether it be choosing the same color and then maybe an accent color, like I've chosen mostly blue, but I have accent colors as purple um, but I also have a selection of different textures so uh, over on this side um, I so first of all handy dandy little sprinkle holder um, this is my favorite way to be able to decorate when I'm making mug huggers because there are so many different styles of uh, sprinkles that I'd like using for these um, the decor is just the options are endless. So um, in this particular case, I'm actually just using a paint tray and it comes with a little plastic cover as well. So it keeps all my sprinkles sorted for me and it's really nice. Um, but I have some granulated sugar style. Um, these are just sanding sugars. I have a purple blue and even a white sparkling sanding sugar would just work wonderfully. Um, the white really kind of accents almost as a snow, um, but the other colors work great. This is one of my roof pieces that I did ahead of time, so you can kind of see what that uh, would look like when you cover the whole thing in sprinkles, um, or sanding sugar in this case. And then I have some nonpareils and a couple of uh, options, and nonpareils just basically mean pearl shape, and they come in a variety of sizes. So you'll see um, the teeny tiny ones, and then we also have a couple of other sizes within our mixtures. So um, this is kind of fun because it allows you to do different decorative options. So uh, for instance, you could lay a row of pearls across the top of the roof to kind of make it look like um, uh, some shingles, for instance. So um, those are definitely options. And then of course we have jimmies. These are the straight little ones. And again, they're in my mixtures as well as just um, just straight jimmies. So whatever you choose to utilize is entirely up to you. It's always fun to pick an accent sprinkle. We've got some really cute little snowflakes I thought was perfect just for the holiday season in general as winter is almost upon us. Um, and these come in a couple of different sizes as well. So we've got some larger ones and some smaller ones. Um, it just makes it really fun to be able to, you know, accent in different ways. So I encourage you to look around, find some sprinkles that you really love, mix and match them. That's what makes this particular project um, so creative is that you, your options are so endless, you can really do whatever you'd like. And then I also have just white chocolate candy melts. Now, I am just using uh, candy melt here. I'm not using real chocolate. If you wanted to re use real chocolate, you certainly can. You just need to go through that tempering process, which is a little bit more timely. And um, if you don't have a little chocolate pot that keeps things warm for you, that tempered chocolate can, uh, can turn quickly on you and not stay the right consistency. So um, that's the other item that's uh, really important here is we do need some sort of chocolate or glue. Now, a lot of people might ask, well, why not just use royal icing? And you absolutely can do this recipe with royal icing. Um, 
it's a flavor preference and a, a drying time preference. So for me, when I am utilizing uh, chocolate, I can just move a little faster through this process than I can if I am using royal icing. I just don't feel like royal icing dries up as quickly as a chocolate does. And so my preference is just simply to use a chocolate. But again, totally up to you, um, whatever you would like to do. Um, okay, so we have another question from Diana and she's asking about the sour cream and that you don't have that in Brazil. Well, welcome from Brazil, by the way. Um, that is very far from us. Um, I'm not exactly sure what your substitution there would be. Um, I definitely uh, know that there is a substitution for sour cream um, that it's like a creme fraiche, basically. Um, it's something, you know, you just have to have a little bit of texture to it. Um, but I would say to you, Diana, if you have a different sugar cookie recipe that you really love, that that doesn't um, utilize sour cream like my recipe does, you feel free to use that. Any cookie recipe is gonna work here as long as you know you can roll it fairly thin um, and when it bakes off, it's gonna hold its shape. So that's kind of the important part. But I think creme fraiche is the substitution if you have that in Brazil. I'm not exactly sure what you guys have there. I've not been, but it's on my list. So um, take a peek at the grocery store in the dairy section and just see what, what might be a good substitution substitute for that uh, with whatever products you have available to you. Okay, so to actually start assembling our little house, I've got some here that are kind of in process just so you can see a little bit of what's gonna happen. But you need six pieces. So you need two of our little house frame. You need two of our side walls. And then you need two that form the roof. Now, uh, in looking at these, if you happen to like the top surface of your cookie better, um, you can use that. If you like the back surface, which tends to be a little flatter, you can use that as well. It is your choice as to uh, which one you prefer. Uh, my preference is to use the flatter side. And when I have any of this dimpling that's happened because of the type of um, pan that I've used, um, you can do a couple of things. You can leave it as is, which just gives a little bit of texture and a bit more of a rustic feel to your cookie, or you can coat it and cover it. So um, that's, again, it's a personal preference. And I hate, I hate to say that so much, but really that's, that's what's so amazing about uh, decorating is anything goes. You don't have to follow a particular rule about, you know, which sprinkle to use and do you cover the whole thing or do you use chocolate or royal icing? There's always lots of options available to you specifically for that. So, um, you know, use your own judgment as to when you need to sub in something or swap something out. Um, that's, that's kind of the fun part is figuring out what will work or won't, won't work. Okay, so a couple of things. If you are going to cover your roof pieces like this, then my suggestion is just to go ahead, dunk it right into your chocolate and make sure you've got good coverage. Now I'm using the side of my pot to kind of um, manipulate where that chocolate is at. It's up to you how precise you wanna be. And you can absolutely use a spatula or this is just like a little palette knife um, if your chocolate isn't, you know, smoothing right off the side of your uh, pot. That's totally fine. And then you just want to go into your sprinkle and just let it sit there for a moment. Give it a good push. Let it sit there for a moment. That chocolate is going to uh, firm up and allow those sprinkles to attach really nicely and hold their shape uh, so that you know we're not um, picking this up and having sprinkles or sanding sugar fall right off. Uh, same, same process, just give it a few seconds. It doesn't take long. And then dip that next one in there. Now, you can do this just for your roof. You can do this for all of your sides. Um, the options are truly endless, and I mean it. You can do whatever decorating process that you would like here. There is no right or wrong answer. Um, as far as assembling them, 
you want to make sure all of your decorative pieces are done first. So if you're going to do any of your rooftops, do those in chocolate and decorate them and then move to the actual assembly process. Um, I'm going to show you one more just with the nonpareils because I really like the nonpareils on the roof. It's just a fun, uh, fun shape to, um, to add a little bit more texture. And again, remember, these are going to stick wherever your chocolate is. So if you've missed any spots on your chocolate and you dunk it, um, the, the cookie will be blank in that one spot. So um, try to do your best. Again, if, if scraping it along your little pot here doesn't work for you, uh, use your spatula, use whatever you need um, to make it work. All right. And usually... I dunk one piece, I set it in the nonpareils, I get my next piece, and by then, um, this, this next one is dry and ready to go. So if you want, you can just give it a little shake over your platter just to make sure you don't have any um, excess pieces. And as far as um, the roof goes, you can actually dunk either side. You either, if you're gonna cover entirely, it doesn't matter which side you're using as a decorative piece. Um, so I was dunking this softer side. You can see uh, the back versus the front. It just has a little bit more shape and curvature to it. So that's why I went that direction. But the rest of these pieces I'll actually go forward with. So, you know, your choice on how uh, and what works for you. And if you, uh, my recommendation is just stick to one side um, you know, if you're going to do all your rooftops with the upside of your cookie, just stick with that so that everything looks uniform. And um, if you're gonna want to, want to do them down, that's fine too. Okay, um, let's see. So then uh, our roofs are done and set aside so that they can set up. And then the next step is gonna be taking our side wall and our front uh, house shape. Um, those are the next pieces. And usually what I find, is the flat piece being out allows for a better look. So let me show you the other way. Uh, again, it's a preference. When I stick this one on the, the side here, um, there is a little bit of a gap that is showing just because of the curvature of the pieces. If you flip this around, both of them, and you come this way, you, you end up with a slightly different look. So your choice if you wanna go this way or this way, um, and just make it work for you. Make whatever, whatever, whichever one you like better. I actually kinda like this way a little bit better. So that's the direction I'm gonna go. I'm gonna change it up for today. Um, because there's no right or wrong answer. That's like the best part about all of this. So I'm gonna just dip the side wall right into my chocolate and then press it right up against the edge of the house. Now, the one thing that you will wanna try to do if you can is set your house pieces flat and then uh, give it some good pressure. You need to kind of hold this for a moment to allow that chocolate to start to cool and then it hardens and of course allows the cookies then to stick together. Um, I do have cold spray on hand in order to utilize and set that chocolate up a little bit faster. But um, if you do it too quickly, if you let go of this too quickly, sometimes that piece can fall apart. And honestly, the cold spray is so powerful for these tiny little cookies. Sometimes it just blows it, blows it down, literally. <laughs> so one piece at a time, you wanna set it aside. We'll do another one here just, and I'm gonna do it the opposite direction just so you can see. There isn't a huge difference, but it will depend on your cookies just a little bit as to which direction you like better. So just give it a little push, and then if there's excess chocolate, you can just wipe it away. That's kind of the other nice part about the chocolate is it wipes fairly smooth right away from the edge of the house and the cookie. And then you have, um, you can always add extra on the inside for some stability if you're struggling with these pieces falling down. So you can always just put a little bit of chocolate on the inside to really give it a little bit more structure. 
If you're worried about any of these cookies drying out and getting too firm, then you can completely coat these cookies in chocolate as well. So that's uh, one more little tip. If you're making these well in advance of the holiday uh, and you plan to either serve them or even gift them, um, by one, coating them completely in chocolate, you're gonna lock in that freshness of the cookie and it really holds up nicely. It won't dry out on you. Um, or just package them really well. You gotta seal them up really nicely. Okay, so then the, uh, I. I make one and I set it aside and then I'll bring another one in and let that one dry. And so I kind of work on two houses at once and that is just to allow for some drying time. It just gives your cookies just a little bit of time for that chocolate to set and um, really hold its shape so that when you move on to the decorating process, you don't have issues with your houses breaking or falling over, any of that. Um, it's just uh, kind of a wise choice to uh, work through the different sections better. All right, and then, nope, this one's not quite firm. So one of the things that you may or may not be able to see with my hands is, uh, right now, I only have pressure on the front piece and of course this side piece that I'm trying to attach. Try really hard not to touch that third piece that's on there and set already because while uh, the chocolate does hold everything together, if you put too much pressure, uh, it will absolutely break on you. So, I, and I don't want that to happen because we spend you know, a lot of time and effort building these. We want them to hold their shape really well. But once it's, once it's kind of stuck there, you can just uh, move on to the next one, set it aside. All right. And just making sure that you stick to the same pattern. So I have one uh, house that has that nice smooth top surface. And then I have one house that has the bottom surface, the, the one that has a little bit of dimpling going on. So um, great. Oh, Trisha, welcome. As a newbie, we're so glad to have you. And what am I using to keep the chocolate melted? Well, uh, I actually have a little melting pot, a chocolate melting pot. This one happens to be from Wilton. And it is just basically a little electric pot. And you have a silicone divider here that... Um, keeps the chocolate warm. So uh, this is my silicone chocolate container. And then uh, every once in a while, I'll just set it over here on top of my little uh, pot warming situation. It's kind of like a fondue pot, if you're familiar with fondue. There are a few different companies out there that produce them. So you can uh, find them actually just at your local big box stores or even on Amazon, of course. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to set this one aside. That one just needs a little bit more time. So just be careful with them. That's um, the hardest part I think is just that these are delicate. Until you get the roof on there, they can be extremely delicate. Now, uh, putting this last uh, house piece on, this is the other frame basically, uh, you have two choices. If this feels sturdy enough, you can dunk in your chocolate um, or you can just put a little bit of chocolate on uh, the house piece and put it together and that's, that's what I'm gonna do because I always get a little nervous just about my houses not holding their shape. And it's um, just going to be that inner edge, just like that. And then you can piece that last one together. Now, once you have this last one together, you are pretty much good to go. That you know, These four walls, this provides a really great structure for our house. It, uh, it just adds that extra hint of structure that we need, that little bit of support. Um, and that usually does the trick. And if you've got your other three walls standing fairly well, if you've got this one on there, and then, um, it will hold its shape. All right, last piece on this one. 
And again, you know, as you're building these, take a peek and if you need to just get rid of a little bit of chocolate, maybe there's too much chocolate there, maybe there's not enough. For instance, there's not enough on this one little piece here. Um, just come in and touch it with a little bit of chocolate if you need a little bit more support to attach it. Uh, don't hesitate to kind of touch these up now. This is the time, truly, this is the time to touch them up because uh, if you get too much further along in the process and they start falling apart on you, then that's when the real problems start to happen and that's where the frustration will start to set in and we certainly don't want that. So uh, just be, uh, you know, be mindful of what situation you have going here and then you can go from there. All right. Any other questions so far? This is really, I mean, you become a little architect here. Um, it's really about building rather than, uh, rather than decorating, but uh, we're, getting, we're getting there. We're almost to the super fun part. I don't know, things like this make, um, make me super happy. I enjoy building anything with my hands, whether it's cookies or cakes or remodeling a master bath, whatever it might be, I enjoy the process. It's just, it's fun to be able to see what you can create with your own two hands. Um, so fantastic. Okay, so uh, once you have your four pieces put together, it is time for the roof. And um, if you wanna do any additional decorating to this little house, um, the inside, I really encourage you to put your rooftop on first. It just makes it a whole lot easier to handle the cookies and um, there's just, that much more structure. The more pieces you have, uh, the more structure is created within this little house. So I do encourage you to do that. Um, it, it would be up to you if you wanted to really spend some time decorating the little, you know, the front door for instance. Um, you may want to do all your front pieces separately then, you know, depending upon what your decor is going to look like. It can be a little tricky. Um, I, I like them assembled as one because then I, can, I have something to hold. Uh, and when you are putting pressure on each of these individual pieces to get them attached, you could potentially you know, make your decorating um, fall off, like sprinkles don't always stay um, real well, so um, you, can, you can damage in the process. So my preference is Cover, cover my roofs and then build my little houses and then start the decorating process from there. Um, so for this, uh, again, you have two choices. You can either do the back of your roof or you can just put a little bit on the top of your roof beams. I have a tendency just to go ahead and get them up on, on the top here because then I can kind of control where that chocolate is going to go, you know, and if I have too much showing on the front part of the house, I can just wipe it off. Whereas if I am putting it on this roof, I don't really know where it's going to go. I don't know where it's going to squeeze. And then I always put rooftops on at the same time so that we can uh, meet them in the middle. You uh, run the, the chance of being a little uneven if you don't uh, put them on at the same time. So one rooftop might be a little higher, one might be a little lower. And again, give it a little bit of pressure. It just needs enough time for those cookies and that chocolate to adhere and firm up a little bit. And then once you have your rooftop sandwich on there, you can move on. Um, again, I like to do just kind of all of these at once, get, get the houses all to the same step of the process, and then it allows me to kind of have the fun and, and decorate the, the front doors all at the same time too. Just clean up my edges a little bit. Always keep a towel handy as well. This is definitely not a clean process, that's for sure. <laughs> this is one of those uh, decorating uh, tasks that I just find to be uh, really messy um, between the chocolate being all over and your sprinkles kind of being all over. Um, this is definitely not, uh, not a clean project. 
I will say though, this is a project that is really fun to get the entire family brought in on. I have a niece and a nephew, uh, and of course my son um, love uh, decorating all of these cookies as well. And it's kind of fun, it's a fun project. If you're looking for an activity to keep people busy uh, while you're, you know, I don't know, baking off your, your Thanksgiving meal, for instance. This is a fun little art project uh, that you could do, and then um, people can take home what they make or even just uh, enjoy them later for dessert. So you have a couple options as far as how you can utilize these. One of uh, my favorite things to do is if I make a bunch of these in advance, you can give them away as gifts too. So you can either give away the completed project or you could even bake them off and assemble your different uh, packages of sprinkles for them and give, give the whole package as a gift. Uh, I know that that is one of the things that I enjoy doing as well is, you know, you sort of do the baking process, but then you assemble all of the uh, decorative items that you need for someone to be able to make these on their own. And that's a fun project for people as well. Um, the other way, obviously, is just to make these on your own and serve them. They make really cute little place setting adornments. Um, you can make a whole village if you wish. Uh, there's all sorts of options. And that's the other thing with uh, the template that I've given you. You can actually enlarge that template to be whatever size you'd like. So if you wanna make a much larger house, you're welcome to do that. That definitely is one way to be able to make that happen um, pretty easily and without having to buy multiple cutters. Okay, I'm just gonna get some of this chocolate off of my surface here. And then um, let's have some fun decorating the fronts and the sides of these. So um, when you are holding your cookie in order to decorate, uh, you have two options. You can either hold this, I, I'm just holding one part of the cookie. I'm not holding any of the other uh, sections. It's just this one piece. Um, or you can hold front and back. So if you're gonna do the side, you can hold front and back. You can also just set it down and have whatever uh, side you're decorating face you. And that's um, typically what I do just because then I know I'm not putting too much pressure on my cookie so that I end up uh, damaging anything. So if you want to, again, cover this entirely, I recommend doing that ahead of time. But if you're just looking to add a little bit of decor, um, just either tapping to it. You can also put a little bit of chocolate in a piping bag, but I like just putting one little snowflake right on the front there. Um, the other thing, let me show you real quick. Um, if you happen to get chocolate on other portions of the cookie that you don't want on the cookie, chocolate scrapes right off. Um, so let me just show you. I've got this little piece of chocolate right here and a little piece right here. It just, uh, it scrapes right off and leaves your cookie nice and clean. So if, um, I, I know the process of working with chocolate in general is fairly messy. It just, it gets on your hands. There's not a whole lot you can do about it. Um, you can come in and scrape things off as you need to. So don't, I wouldn't stress over that part. It comes right off. It's really quite nice. All right, just a little pressure to keep that one there. And then I like to just clean up, oop, I didn't wait long enough. That's the thing. You really need to just put it down. <laughs> I, you know, sometimes I have to remind myself, put it down, <laughs> don't play with it anymore. And then, you know, grab, grab some, uh, another house and start working. So I'm gonna set a couple of my jimmies here and show you, I'm gonna add a little bit more decoration to the rooftop of this one. So just using my knife, I'm just gonna run a little line of chocolate there. And I am picking just one color of Jimmy to go down both sides. Just to outline, it's almost like it has, you know, Christmas lights or um, a different type of shingle, for instance. There's, again, all sorts of different options here. Okay, and then a little bit on this side. 
And picking the right sprinkles is really, really helpful here. You know, um, some of these are a little bit more curved. Some of them are pretty straight. You know, find what works for whatever decor piece you're doing. And then maybe I will go with a larger pearl. Uh, another option, if placing the chocolate with your um, knife doesn't work, you can always just put a little bit of chocolate on your surface. And especially with the pearls, that's what works really well. So if you just pinch your pearl and put a little dab right on the edge of the pearl, then you'll be able to just set it where you want it rather than having a lot of chocolate, you know, kind of sitting there and oozing out. You just need a little dab. And I would say that the pearls are probably the harder, uh, the, the hardest of all of the decorations just because they're a little heavier it's kind of like the snowflake you know they're a little heavier so if they're not sitting perfectly uh, they're not going to stay where you want them to you're going to have to hold on just for a moment so if patience is not something that you possess uh, this might not be the project for you just giving you a little heads up sometimes these styles of uh, cookies they're just labor intensive right you know they take a lot of time but the way that i look at this is these are fun they should be enjoyable and relaxing for you um, the chocolate makes the uh, royal icing too you have to kind of have to hold on to it for a little bit um, makes that process a little bit tricky sometimes um, but Try it, give it a try. And then I, I like the idea of outlining this little doorway here. So just a little bit, again, that's uh, kind of the nice thing is it doesn't take a lot of chocolate, just takes a little bit, just enough to kind of get it, just moist enough to hold on. All right. And then I'm gonna put one more across. Just that top piece right there. So, you know, be creative as you are making your own little houses. These are just, for me, they're just so fun to kind of keep playing around and see what else I can find um, that might work. Uh, putting a little, Decorative accent in different locations is is definitely the way to do this. You know, um, if you want something super simplistic and not quite as labor intensive, then I recommend just covering your whole house. Uh, make every piece of this house covered in sanding sugar or in the nonpareils. You know, you can do your sides in maybe do sides in a, a sanding sugar and your top in a nonpareil. Your options are endless. Okay, so we'll let that one sit. I'm gonna come back to this one because I wanna show you what I wanna do on this top edge. So the place for some of your larger pearls is the rooftop. This rooftop is a great location for that. All I'm doing is making just a little um, track here. It's like a little trawl. Uh, we just want a little bit of space there so that we can get our pearls to sit nicely. Now something else that could work here, especially in this situation, is just a little bit of piping gel will work. Uh, I have a tendency to stick with one medium. So if you, know, if you are uh, more comfortable using royal icing or more comfortable using a piping gel, you know, feel free to do that. Use whatever works best for you. The piping gel will actually dry on the clearer side. So that is uh, certainly the nice uh, feature of that, let me put the, I'm gonna actually alternate between the big and the small. Whoop. If it'll stay, there we go. And what's nice about the top of the roof is it has that little indentation there. So it holds your decor very nicely. And it looks like we need one of each to finish that. Just like that. So, I mean, that is right there just, I mean, I'm done. That, 
like that one is perfect to me it just has you know enough decor that it's fun and it's got some a decoration but it's not uh, anything that's overly elaborate Obviously, you could spend a lot of time on these depending upon uh, what you are doing with them. There, there are just so many options. I'm curious if anyone who is watching, have any of you made mug huggers before? Have you tried this? Have you made cookies before? Tell me um, what, you, what you've done. Um, is this gonna be your first experience decorating cookies or have you done cookies for a long time but you're like, ooh, that looks interesting. Let's do something different. Tell me all about it. I wanna hear. Um, Really, the key is just finding some fun sprinkles. And there are so many options out there right now. Uh, I think sprinkles, to me, like are the new rage in everything. They're, they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes and colors. It's just, it makes decorating these cookies so much more fun when you have something um, different. All right. Any other questions? Anything? Let's see what let's see what you can come up with. Come up with something fun for me. What is your favorite holiday dessert to make? Do you are you a cookie person? Do you like to make cakes? What is it that you enjoy making most? That's my next question for you. I wanna hear, I wanna know what you guys like. Um, this is a process, so cookie decorating for me uh, was something that we did as very little kids. So my, um, my family, it was my sister and I, and we would have a cookie decorating contest every year. So we would make our sugar cookies. They would always be the same shapes. It was always a tree, a snowman, and uh, like a gingerbread guy. And those three, we, we each had to make our own cookie, um, decorate from start to finish, and then on either Thanksgiving or Christmas, depending upon uh, when we were hosting that year, we would set all the cookies out that we decorated and then everybody would have to vote for which one they liked best. So, um, you know, it, it was always kind of a fun experience just to play and be creative and, um, I have a bit of a competitive edge, as does my sister, so um, it, it was always fun for us to just use our creative juices. We were always doing something super creative with food. All right, so I, I have done the front of this one and the top. I am just going to work just a little bit longer. All right, never made mug huggers, um, but you've inspired me to try. Well, thank you, Anne. I'm so glad to hear that. I, uh, I really love mug huggers. They're a lot of fun. And again, it's a great project either for yourself or for the kiddos or just any, anybody, really. It's a fun project for um, any group of people. And it sounds like Nancy says you've done small ginger. Um, gingerbread houses with third graders. Oh my goodness, you've got your hands full with the third graders. <laughs> uh, yeah, that sounds like it would be a very messy classroom after that, uh, that's for sure. All right, cleaning up a little bit on that one. Not sure what I want to do here. There, there are so many great options. I want to show you one more thing. I am actually going to just set a little bit of chocolate here on my mat. Sometimes it's a little harder to get into that little guy. Uh, I am going to dip the bottom and I am gonna put just a little bit of the white sugar on the bottom as well. So this is a really fun way to make it look as though it has snowed around the bottom of your house. So, you know, you can get really creative on uh, how you bring that decor to life. Just that bottom edge just looks like a little bit of snow came. Oh, a little bit of chocolate. Um, so these are just adorable, a great way to be able to uh, make either a gift to package up either in a little cellophane bag. They make cute little uh, plastic boxes that are two inches by two inches by two inches that fit these 
perfectly. They also have some longer ones where you can put about four houses in. So, you know, have fun with it. Um, find some really creative ways to be able to decorate your houses. And of course, we always love seeing pictures. So if you want to post on our social media, um, oftentimes we will repost what our students have made. So if you want to if you want to be on the uh, Instagram or Facebook uh, celebrity pages, uh, you can certainly do that and get, uh, get your name and your project out there. It's a lot of fun. Um, if you are looking for more inspiration on cookie decorating, a Creative Cake Design and Craftsy both have multiple cookie decorating classes. Um, I know with Creative Cake Design, we have a wonderful cookie decorator named Maddie Gartman. She is normally the one here doing cookies, um, but this is one of my favorite holiday projects. Even though I'm more of a cake designer, from a personal perspective, I just love making these tiny little cookie houses. They're certainly not nearly as decorative as some of Maddie's cookies, so I encourage you to check out all of our different videos available both for free as well as um, the gold level and premium level, which have uh, some paid memberships. Coming up at uh, 11.30 Central, I actually have another class for our gold members, which is a special exclusive live event. We're gonna be making a really cool cake with pine cones on it. So uh, we will drop in a link if you're interested in checking out that event. Uh, you must be a gold member, but we have a special deal for you. It's really, really inexpensive. So I hope that you will check out that link and join me in another half hour in order Order to create another amazing holiday cake inspired by nature. So we'll see you there.